Welcome, amen, welcome each and every one of you once again, amen, to Prophetic Impact Prayer and Word Ministry, amen. I am Pastor Prophetess Carmen Haywood, amen, the overseer of this ministry, and I am honored once again to be before you all on tonight, amen, some of you on our prayer call tonight, glory to God, amen, some of you, amen, on social media, glory to God. We thank God for each and every one of you on tonight. Blessings, blessings, blessings to each and every one of you tonight. Amen. I am excited once again about what God is getting ready to do in this atmosphere. Amen. We're logging on also to um, Instagram Live on tonight. Amen. So for those of you, if you want to jump on over to Instagram, that's fine. Amen. Those of you that uh, may be on our prayer line tonight, we thank God for you. Um, those that want to stay on the call tonight, feel free to stay on uh, the prayer line. Glory to God. And thank you all for sharing Amen. I see you all sharing on tonight. Blessings to each and every one of you. Listen, take the time to share. Invite someone to the um, Facebook Live on tonight. It's going to be good. Amen. It's going to be real good. This teaching is going to bless somebody. Amen. We're going to turn to the word on tonight. Glory to God. I'm not just going to prophesy. Amen to you all. Because listen, some of you have had enough of prophecy. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm going to say that again. Hallelujah. Our churches are full of nothing but prophecy. Glory to God. And nobody is getting the word of God. Come on here. The Lord began to deal with me on today and I began to cry. I began to weep for the church. Why was I crying? Why was I weeping? Because nobody knows the word anymore. So if you don't know the word then you don't know Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. If you don't know the word, then you don't know Jesus. Come on. Get that in your spirit. <laughs> Come on here. Hallelujah. If you don't know the word, then you don't know Jesus. And this is why we have many believers walking around defeated. Because they don't know the word. Come on here. Their pastor is preaching and teaching the word of God, but... You know, their, their ears, that's right, itching, Sister May, that's right. They have itching ears. They only hear what they want to hear. Y'all know I get in trouble every time I come on live, right? But I'm fine with it now. <laughs> Amen, because this live is blessing so many people. Glory to God. Amen. This live is going to richly bless many of you who would hear the word of God. Take it in your spirit. Amen. And just allow the Lord to have his way. Blessings to you, Instagram live tonight. Amen. As you all are coming on, take the time to share Instagram, Facebook, and our prayer line. I love you all in Jesus' name. Thank you all for greeting me on tonight. Those of you that have greeted me, God bless you. I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. To our members, covenant partners tonight, God bless you and welcome back. Welcome, welcome back. Amen. To our ministry prayer line call. Um, we are also on our prayer line right now. And the number to dial in is 712 775-7031. Um, the access code is 222-953-820 pound. All right. Blessings to you all. God bless you on Instagram. Blessings on Facebook. Once again, thank you all for taking the time to greet me. God bless you. Listen, turn. I need you all to get your Bibles out. Amen. We're getting ready to pray in a minute. Glory to God. Um, I was looking for a couple people on our prayer line tonight, amen, who could lead in prayer, but I didn't I didn't see um, anybody who I felt was led to pray tonight. Glory to God. Um, the intercessor that usually prays tonight did not reach out to me, and so therefore, amen, I'm going to pray. Glory to God, but I was looking for a few people on our call tonight. Amen, Sister Pamela, I was looking for you as well. Amen, I know that you love to pray on our call. Amen. Um, so a few of you, if I don't see you on, I can't ask you to pray. Glory to God, but it's all right. Somebody just hashtag, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Glory to God. I'm trying my best to raise up leaders, amen, in the body of Christ. Um, but it's very hard to raise up leaders, amen, those that don't want to um, be poured into, or better yet, those that don't want to be used of God. Amen. If you can't say amen, I'm going to say amen for you. Come on, somebody. I said, if you can't say amen, I'm going to say amen for you. Come on. Glory to God. So my prayer has now shifted. Amen. My prayer is now, Lord, send those to the ministry who really want to be developed, who, who really have a calling on their life and they are willing. Somebody shout willing. They are willing. They are willing to be used of God. 
Because see, the era I came from, the church I came from, churches I sat under, my pastor didn't have to ask me to do anything. I was so willing and I was right there to the point to where anything that she needed, anything that my former leaders needed, I was right there. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all don't want to talk tonight. It's quiet. The church has shifted. Things have changed. But everybody is called. Everybody is called. It's a calling on my life, Pastor. You know, the, the Lord called me. What did he call you to do? That's why, right, Sister Brenda, willing. That's the word. Because the Bible even speaks about it. If you be willing and obedient, you shall what? Eat the good of the land. Who's willing? <laughs> Nobody's willing anymore. Come on here. Everything is based upon, you know, if you do this for me, then I'll do that for you. Somebody shout, the devil is a liar. <laughs> Glory to God. That's right. Willing, willing. So we must be willing, amen, and obedient. Glory to God to be used of God. Amen. But God's going to send the helpers. Amen. That word has already been coming. Amen. Uh, to our ministry that God's going to send helpers. He's going to send willing workers. Amen. To our ministry. So I'm excited about that. Amen. I'm excited about God, what God is getting ready to do. Amen. This new uh, shift that's getting ready to take place in our ministry. I'm excited, y'all. Glory to God, because God has already shifted me. And so because the Lord has shifted me, amen, glory to God, I need those who are willing, amen, to participate, amen, in the ministry, glory to God. And he's going to send just that, amen, God is going to do it, glory to God. I thank God even on earlier today, amen, some of you were able to tune in with me um, as I was um, en route um, earlier today, I was en route and I thank God for it because, you know, I had stopped um, the Facebook lives um, in my vehicle, uh, which so many people all over the globe were blessed. Amen. So many people were blessed by the Facebook lives. Um, you know, the, the sudden stops and, you know, the word of the Lord being released um, in my vehicle. And I'm sharing this because um, I thank God uh, for the release today. Amen. I thank God for the release and I thank God for that word on jealousy um, and envy. You know, it was so needed. I got so much feedback um, from so many people who had inboxed me. Um, a couple people emailed me and they were like, Pastor, you, you were all in, in my conversation, you know, and they're all the way in Tennessee. One lady was all the way in Atlanta. Um, and so I thank God for his word. I thank God that when he's speaking, he's not just speaking here in our ministry, but he's speaking globally. Come on. God is speaking globally, but the Bible says he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. Come on. So you have to have an ear to hear God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have to have an ear to hear him. Come on, somebody. God says just one ear. That's all you need. We got two, but he says, he that has an ear, blessings to you on Instagram live tonight. Um, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. And so when God is speaking, we have to do what? Listen. Come on. When God is speaking, we have to do what? Listen. Come on. Hallelujah. It's one thing to hear the word of God, but do you, are you listening? Come on, it's one thing to take instruction, but are you listening to the instruction? Come on, because once the instruction is given, it's up to you to embrace the instruction and say, okay, I'm going to avail myself. Y'all got that revelation? I'm going to avail myself to you, God. I heard you. I'm listening, which means I'm in tune <laughs> with what you're saying, God. Hallelujah. See, it is very easy, but so many people make it complicated. Come on. It is very easy what God is asking us to do, but so many people make it complicated because of this thing called the heart. Come on. Do you know this thing right here can mess you up? Come on, somebody. That's why David, that's why David messed up because his heart was wicked. Come on. He was still king, but his heart was messed up. And so when your heart is not right, Help me, Holy Ghost. See, we talked about jealousy and envy today. Listen, there's so many people that are jealous and envious. And, and it starts right here with the heart. Come on. Because if you realize, people of God, that God has given you gifts and he's given you talents. And God has given you so much. 
Glory to God. Um, he has given you so much. Um, okay, elderly, I, I got your message. God has given you so much um, to be able to utilize on your own that you don't have to be jealous or envious of anyone. Amen. So prayerfully, this word tonight is going to bless somebody. I need you all to share if you have not yet shared. God bless you, daughter Shanika. It's so good to see you back on Facebook. Amen. And to be connected to us on tonight. I really believe that this word, um, this teaching rather that I'm going to do tonight is going to really bless somebody. Amen. Who, who really wants a heart change. That's right. There you go, sister Lisa, heart transformation. I think I taught that two years ago. Amen. And I also taught on the heart transformation last year, um, in our ministry and on our prayer line. Amen. So for those who received it, received it, you know, um, those who really, you know, want more of God. Amen. They are they, you're allowing God to touch your heart and you're allowing God to take out whatever it is, you know, that may be in your heart that is causing you to dislike, um, that's causing you to hate, that's causing you to want to have revenge. You know, this this heart right here, our hearts can be so wicked. You know, this is why God said he said that he knows the heart. Amen. That's why we got to be careful when we say God knows my heart, because if, if we loosely say that God knows my heart, what's in there should not be in there. So that's kind of like an excuse. God knows my heart. You know, he, he know he knows what I, what I usually do. You know, God, God knows that I'm a wretch undone. He knows that I'm a work undone. You know, why do we say those things? Come on. Why, why do we say, you know, God knows my heart? You know, as long as I repent, I'm OK. But what happens when you continue in sin? My God, tonight. Listen, God said, do not continue in sin that grace would abound. A lot of times we play on God's grace and we play on his mercy. Come on. A lot of times we take God's mercy for granted. You know, the Bible does say that his grace is sufficient for us. But the more that we keep playing on his grace and playing on his mercy, oh, God's going to forgive me. I could keep doing the same thing. No, what you're doing is digging a hole. You're digging a ditch. And after a while, you're going to fall in that ditch. And only God can bring you out. Come on. Only God can bring us out. Come on. Somebody shout, only God can bring me out. Only God can deliver me. Glory to God. David called on the Lord in Psalm 51. And I want those of you, amen, that may have a heart issue tonight. I want you to meditate on Psalm 51. We're also getting ready to pick up morning glory prayer, but I need intercessors. I need intercessors. Listen, I can't do this by myself. Glory to God. I, can, I cannot do the ministry by myself. I need intercessors. If I got to reach out to my pastor friends, that's what I'll do. If I got to reach out to my anointed sisters in the Lord, that's what I'll do. Glory to God. Amen. But I'm not going to pull on them. Amen. When we have intercessors in our ministry. Come on. I need y'all to step up and stop playing. Come on here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes you need a good old fashioned whooping. I'm getting in trouble tonight. Come on. Glory to God. So sometimes you need a good old fashioned whooping in the Holy Ghost. See, we don't have enough church mothers. We don't have enough. People want to just patty cake you, you know, just pat you on the back. It's going to be okay. You deep in sin. It's going to be all right. You lying, cheating, and stealing. It, it, you, you, it's going to be okay. And they on a fast train to hell. And can't nobody see it though. But everybody can see. Can nobody see. That is so many people within our churches, within our, within our ministries that are on their way to hell. Can't nobody see that, but everybody can see. Come on, if I'm in sin, I don't want you to prophesy to me. I need you to tell me what to do to come out of sin. Come on, because if you're hearing God for real, for real, y'all know I'm telling the truth tonight. We got all these prophets, but can't nobody see that people are in sin and they're on their way to hell. You mean to tell me you can't see that somebody is, is deep in sin? They keep lying. You know, they, they keep fornicating. They keep committing adultery. And you mean to tell me you can't see it? Blessings to you, Apostle Gail. Don't start tonight. <laughs> don't you start tonight. Don't start, Apostle Gail. Don't start. Don't start, my brother, because you're going to have me laughing. And you know, if I start laughing, I get sleepy. I can't get sleepy right now. I got to teach this lesson. <laughs> I'm not doing it tonight. Amen. Come on. 
Glory to God. Amen. We need correction in the house of God. We need the conviction of the Holy Spirit to come back again. We got to stop patting people flesh because guess what? God's going to hold us accountable. He's going to hold us accountable if we keep patting people's flesh. Come on here. I know the churches I came up in, they ain't pat my flesh. They said, baby, if you listen, it's a calling on your life. You better get, you better get it together. And I'm grateful. Listen, I want to share this. I'm grateful that I had leaders in my life. Listen, I had the best pastors. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That I submitted to. Listen, they told me when I was right. They told me when I was wrong. Who am I helping tonight? And see, that's what we need in the body of Christ. Listen, because if people come to our churches and they're bound up, high up by shape, and they leave out bound, then what have you done as the leader? Come on here. What, what have the saints really done? Are, are we really, you know, restoring back the church? Come on. Are we, are we re rebuilding God's people? Come on. Are we building up the body of Christ or are we helping the enemy tear it down? I'm getting in trouble tonight. I'm getting in trouble. I'm getting in trouble. I'm getting in trouble tonight. Are we helping Satan? Are we helping the adversary? Come on here. Are we helping the evil one? By not telling people the truth. Hiya by shape. Mm. Glory to God. But by not telling them the truth. It's quiet. It's quiet. <laughs> I'm glad my leaders told me the truth. I'm glad my pastors told me the truth. I got my hand lifted to God. I'm grateful. Amen. I'm grateful. Amen. That somebody pulled me back. Hiya by shape. When I was not ready. They told me, uh, -uh you, you don't have it yet. You, you, you don't have it yet. Call on Jesus. Come on, see, that's what the old mothers of the church did because they had what was called wisdom. Y'all need to share this broadcast. They had what was called wisdom and the church does not have leaders who walk in wisdom anymore. We high five in the saints and we walking around having a good time with the saints. But you a leader in the body of Christ. How? See, I'm the one that's going to tell you the truth. Come on. See, the other prophet, the other broadcast you get on, they're going to prophesy to you and tell you how wonderful you are. No, the Holy Ghost is going to tell you the truth here in this ministry so that you can get yourself together. And not only that, so that you can be used of God effectively. Let me help somebody. If there's a calling on your life and you're in sin, how can you help the next person? Come on. If there's a calling on your life and you keep lying and you, you know, you, you just keep doing all kinds of things that are ungodly. Listen, it is. How can you help the person that, that really needs help? How can you pray their deliverance and you haven't been delivered? I'm getting in trouble, but it's good trouble. Come on. I'm, I'm getting in trouble, but it's, this is good. This is good tonight because we all need a searchlight check. We all need, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We, we all need, amen. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit to do a check on us. Come on. We all need the power of God working in our life. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We had such, such a, 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 a bless, um, some blessed women that came out to our women's conference, our women of virtue. I mean, they came from all over. We had Mississippi in the house. We had Ohio. We had Florida. We had Tennessee. I mean, we had Philadelphia in the house. Listen, we had about 12 different cities and states at our women's conference. What am I saying? Those women who were blessed and impact in our conference, they took what they got back to their city and state. Come on, we got to stop having revivals and all it is is prophecy. No, people need to be healed. They need to be delivered and they need to be set free. Come on. It's okay to raise an offering. It's okay to raise money because it takes money to do ministry. Come on. But what happens when somebody's soul higher by shape is in jeopardy? Come on. What happens when, you know, that person doesn't know how they, they're going to, they're going to make it the next day. Come on. And they didn't get no word. And this is what happens in our churches. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. This is exactly what happens in our churches. And people leave with a void. They leave with the void. And guess what they do? They turn to sex. They turn to drugs. They turn to making more money. Y'all don't want to talk tonight. I'm going to tell the truth. To fill the void that they're looking for. 
Come on. Instead of the pastor, instead of the apostle, instead of the bishop, instead of the leader telling the person, you need Jesus. Ooh, shut up. Mm. You need Jesus. You don't need more money. You don't need more sex. Who am I talking to? You don't need more drugs. Come on, somebody. You don't need a person to make you feel good and to pet your flesh. Hiya by shape. Because some of you got your reward here on the earth, whether you know it or not. Some of you are putting people in the place of God. I'm getting in trouble. But hear the word of the Lord. Some of you, oh God, I hear you tonight. Yes, Lord. Some of you have people in the place of God. Mm, shut up. Oh God. Some of you have your children in the place of God. It just hurts my heart. It really does. It hurts my heart because Jesus is standing there and his arms is stretched wide. And so many people don't want to come to him, but they profess his name. Mm. Oh, God. So many people profess the name of Jesus, but they don't really live for him. Come on. Hallelujah. They don't live a set apart life. Shut up. Yes, God. They don't live a set apart life. Come on. They're telling you, no, you can do the things of the world and, and you can still be in God. The devil is a liar. I don't know who I'm helping tonight, but the devil is a liar. Come on. You can't be lying and fornicating and committing adultery. Talking about you still a prophet. Sit down. No, you're not. No, you're not. And you need to sit down. You need to sit your happy self down. Your leader, your apostle, your bishop, whoever affirmed you needs to sit you all the way down because you are making a mockery of the church. Who am I talking to? Somebody can hear me tonight. And somebody's going to watch the replay. You are making a mockery of God. And what does the Bible say? Be not deceived. God is not mocked. He said, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Many are reaping. Help me, Holy Ghost, tonight. Many are reaping for what they have sown. And you could try to pray for them. You Listen, you, you could call their name out 20 times a day. If they do not repent before God, they will not be forgiven. Listen, if they don't come before God and they don't lift their hands and surrender, let me tell you something. You can pray till the cows come home. Because this thing right here has become so wicked, the heart. It has become so wicked. It has become so wicked. And God says, listen, yes, the Bible says, who knows the heart? Only God knows the heart. Come on. Yes, God knows our heart. But we got to stop using that as a camouflage. We got to give God our heart. Come on, because if God knows your heart and it's still wicked, did you really give it to him? My God. D did you really give God your heart if it's still cold? If it's still malice in your heart? If it's still jealousy? Hallelujah. Whatever is in your heart that is not of God, if it's still there, then have you really given God your heart? Oh, somebody going to cry, cry out to Jesus tonight. Somebody going to come back to the Lord tonight. Somebody is going to cry out, what must I do to be saved? Somebody going to come back to Jesus for real tonight. Hallelujah. Somebody going to cry out to the Lord tonight and really give God back your heart. Listen, we can't hide behind the titles. We can't hide behind the so-called calling. We got to stop saying, you know, all of this stuff that we are. And we can't even love our neighbors. Hi, am I shame. Woo, God. We can't even love our neighbors as we love ourselves. God is not pleased. Listen, the Lord is not pleased. He is not pleased. God is not pleased at all. God is not. He's not pleased, church. Listen, God is not pleased in this hour. He is not pleased. Yes, God, I hear you. God is not pleased with his church right now. Mm -mm, this is why he can't come back. Shut up. Woo, God. 
Listen, he can't come back right now because if God, oh, y'all don't want, y'all don't want to hear me tonight. You don't hear me in the Holy Ghost. You don't hear me in the Holy Ghost. If God was to come back right now, many of you would not make it in. And you know you wouldn't make it in because you have not repented and fully given God your heart. Come on. It's enough of saying, God, use me. So many people got their hands lifted to my Lord, use me. God, use me. Use me for your glory, God. And you don't even want to go through your process. Come on here. So many people got their hands lifted. I'm so anointed. I'm so called by God. It's a calling on my life. And you can't even treat people right. And let alone pay your bills. Half of y'all don't tithe. I'm getting in trouble. I'm getting in trouble. Half of you don't even support another church. Come on, some of you, you'll take your money to the buffet instead of sowing it into the kingdom. But you're talking about you love Jesus. Ooh, God. Some of you online shopping and you're spending all your money and then you sow $5 into the church. It's like you tipping God. You're saying, God, here you go. You, you can just take that. I love the ministry. I love what you're doing for me, God. You know, you keep on blessing me, Lord. I'm so grateful, but then you just give God crumbs. We give God anything and we expect him to give us everything. When the truth of the matter is he wakes us up every day. Listen to this. And he loads us up with what? Benefits. It's in the book of Psalm. Listen, he loads us up with benefits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God loads us up every day with benefits. Every time he wakes us up, he says brand new mercies you will see. Somebody shout, Lord, help me to do better. So somebody just hashtag, Lord, help me to do better. God, I repent. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout, I repent. God, please help me to do better. Glory to God. This word that I have to release tonight is going to bless the body of Christ. But I just had to lay the foundation because it's time to get right with God. It is really time to get right with God. People are dying. Hiya, Bashe. People are dying suddenly. People are dying in their sleep. Glory to God. Hallelujah. One of my dear sisters messaged me today. Amen. I was there in South Carolina. I'm not going to say the name of the church. Amen. But, you know, one of the members, you know, was just doing all kinds of stuff. And, and it just so happened that the person is now dead. You know, they died. And this is the thing. And suddenly, suddenly this person died. And you got people playing around. Playing around, playing with God's higher by shape, playing with God's people. You playing around all the time. When you gonna stop playing? Somebody shout, Lord, I repent. I repent. God help me to do better. You know, when I was in prayer today, I, I couldn't do nothing but cry out to God. I begin to thank God. You know what I thank God for? We can already pray in a minute. I, I, I got to be transparent here. I begin to thank God, Sister Sequita. I said, Lord, thank you that I'm still a vessel of honor in these last and evil days. Listen, listen. I give God the glory. Listen, Sister Lisa. I begin to talk to God today and the tears were just falling. Minister Asia, the, the tears was falling, daughter. I said, God, thank you for keeping me. Mm. Listen, listen. I, I begin to I begin to cry out to God. I'm being transparent, y'all. And I said, Lord, thank you that I'm still a leader in the body of Christ who can cry aloud and spare not. Glory to God. I, I, I begin to cry out to God and said, thank you that our ministry is still standing. See, we take so many things for granted. Some of you get on the prayer line and you just want to eat, eat, eat. You know, you get on the call and you just, just feed me, Lord. Feed me, Lord. God, feed me. I need to hear another word. Oh, it's prayer line time. Oh, it's Facebook time. Oh, I just want, I just want, I just want. When's the last time you said, God, here? When's the last time you gave God a sacrifice? When's the last time you gave God your heart and you didn't want nothing back? Help me, Holy Ghost, tonight. Come on here. Because a lot of times we'll, we'll do things on condition. And I'm so grateful, Sister Lisa. I said, Lord, I'm grateful that even when God was silent. Let me bless somebody with this. Because there are seasons in your life when God is silent. 
All he's telling you to do is go forth and do the work. And it was a season in our ministry where God was silent. In other words, he was giving me what to release, but he wasn't saying much. Come on here. He was giving me what to release to the body of Christ for those who really wanted it. Come on. Come on. He, he, was, he was giving me just a few words. And it was a season in our ministry that he did that. God ain't always speaking to you every day. Stop that foolishness. No, that's your mind thinking. That's God's higher by shape. Y'all better stop this foolishness. Now, Mother Carmen coming out now. Listen, y'all, some of y'all better, some of you better stop this foolishness. It's God speaking to you. He's speaking to you. He's not telling you to get on live every day to tell people one word or two words or that's not God. Come on, he's not telling you. And and you don't have no fruit in your life. <laughs> right. Right. You need to you need to sit up uh, right. You need to sit under somebody. You need to You need to sit your happy self down. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I hear it again. You need to sit your happy self down. And you need to sit under a true leader and be a part of a real ministry. And I'm not talking about these Facebook pastors. I, listen, I'm not, I'm, I'm not coming at nobody. You can tag them in this video. It really don't matter to me. Come on, because God got me covered. I'm, I, listen, Sister Maisha, you already know your pastor. I, I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> you know, as the young people say, we Gucci, right? <laughs> Listen, I still got a little Philly in me, y'all. I'm here in North Carolina, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm still city. I'm just saying I'm still a city girl. <laughs> Come on here. Glory to God. Thank you, man of God, Maurice. Amen. Listen, Coach Douglas, you're going to be real proud of me. You're going to be proud of me right here. Because I remember, amen, Coach Douglas, I remember when... Um, I believe I had reached out to you about working out and things like that, you know, and you began to encourage me. So I'm back in the gym. Praise God. <laughs> I'm back in the gym, Coach Douglas. And, you know, the things that you told me, it, it, it replayed in my mind today. Amen. I believe you said if you do the same thing for 21 days, um, you'll start seeing a, um, you'll start seeing a manifestation of it. But you got to keep doing it. You got to keep doing it. You got to keep doing it. Amen. So thank you, Coach Douglas. Amen. He's he's on the broadcast tonight. You know, he really blessed me. And that's why I say I give honor to whom honor is due. And you never know when somebody is speaking to you. Let me help somebody. You never know when somebody is pouring into your spirit how you're going to need it later. Right? <laughs> that's why we Gucci, right? Listen, you, you, don't, you don't know. You don't know. And so it replayed, Coach Douglas. It played in my mind today. And I was like, wow. You know? And I said, okay, God, I'm going to stay focused this time. Whew, glory to God. See, I I'm telling you, sometimes you got to take what was given to you and you have to apply it. You can't see the fruit or the manifestation of a word unless you apply it. Oh, that's for somebody tonight. That's for somebody tonight. Amen. Thank you, um, Prophet William. God bless you tonight. Thank you for joining us also. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm telling you what I know. Somebody may speak a word to you. That's what that's why you got to be careful that you don't be so big headed. Who am I talking to tonight? And you're not so high and mighty, you know, to the point to where you can't take constructive criticism. You know, you can't take an open rebuke. You know, the Bible says open rebuke is better than secret love. Come on, open rebuke is better than secret love. I'd rather get rebuked openly than somebody secretly love me. Oh, that's good right there. Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> don't tell me you love me behind closed doors. Or don't tell me you love me when everybody leave the room. You know, that's what the people do now. You, oh, pastor, I just love you. Providence, I just love you. Say lie. We're going to pause right there and think about that. Because I believe that's for many of you on tonight. It's the truth, right, Prophet Anthony? Come on. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Blessings to you all on Instagram Live tonight. Hey, Amen. We got a few people on here. Let me just wave at everybody. I don't want to seem like I'm not a good <laughs> facilitator. 
I'm still trying to learn. Amen. Um, I'm still trying to learn Instagram live, y'all. They coming on and getting off. Coming on, getting off. Well, you know, to God be the glory. Let us pray. Amen. Because the word tonight, the word tonight is relax, rest, and receive from the Lord. Amen. God gave me that in, in my time of prayer. Amen. He said, relax, rest, and receive from me, saith the Lord. That's what God gave me. Amen. That's exactly what the Lord gave me. Because God's going to um, refresh many of you. A season of refreshing is coming. Amen. The Lord also revealed to me, we get ready to pray and dive into the word. Um, but God revealed to me also that many, many people are unstable, meaning they're all over the place. And if you know anything about a mother, when she's getting ready to give birth, the doctors tell her in the third trimester to be still. Oh, it's going to be real good tonight. This, this going to, this going to be real good tonight. This word going to bless you tonight. It's going to be some revelation, so I need y'all to stay with me, all right? It's going to be a little deep. <laughs> Somebody shout, I'm ready. I'm ready. Come on, this, this is not on the surface. Listen, I don't know what your pastor's teaching you. And you know, I, I don't know. But this is going to be some meat tonight. This is going to be some steak and potatoes. <laughs> Come on. It's going to be some meat tonight. For those of you, you know you've been all over the place. You know your mind has just been all over the place. And you're trying to make sense of this. Some of you are trying to make sense of it. You're like, God, I'm, 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 I'm everywhere and I really need structure. I want to minister to you tonight. I want to minister to you tonight. All right, Sister Marcia said, I'm ready. All right, all right. Sister Pamela said, I'm ready. Okay, come on. I got some hearts that's ready tonight. All right. Okay, Sister Roberta says, I'm ready. All right. Sister Nidra says, I'm ready. Come on, Sister Jennifer says, I'm ready. Minister Asia says, I'm ready. Anita said, I'm ready. All right. All right, we're we going to dive right into the word. Amen. Let us pray. Glory to God. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we just take this time to repent in your presence, oh God. Father, we thank you for this time, Lord God, to gather together to feast at your table, Lord. We thank you, God, just for who you are on tonight, God. For you are Elohim. You are God all by yourself. You are El Shaddai. You are Lord God Almighty. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides for us. You are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Yes, God, we thank you. Hayabashe, just for being the sovereign God, for being the all-knowing God. Hallelujah. You are omnipotent present you are everywhere at the same time father so for that we give you praise for that we give you glory and for that we give you all the honor lord as we hire by shade ah god as we partake of your word tonight god oh god let this word not fall on deaf ears oh god let it not fall to the ground father but oh god let it accomplish what it is sent out to do tonight father i thank you even now for every listener oh god i thank you lord god yes god for every listening ear god you said in your word he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit of the lord is saying unto the church so father i thank you right now that your word is going to go forth god it will accomplish hallelujah it will manifest god in your people's lives in the mighty name of jesus lord we thank you for the victory now we thank you lord god for soundness we thank you for stability tonight god hey we thank you for a strong foundation in you god and i thank you for those who are coming ready tonight god just to feast just to hear your word god and then to be doers of your word in the mighty name of jesus father we thank you and we praise you now we thank you for the blood that covers us the blood of jesus that washes us oh god the blood higher by shape oh god we thank you for the blood that cleanses our mind that cleanses our heart that cleanses our spirit yes god oh the blood of jesus will never lose its power holy spirit have your way on tonight god oh god move in the midst of us like never before god higher by shape oh God, release somebody that is in bondage tonight, God. Oh, God, break the shackles and set the captive free tonight. Oh, God, begin to heal, deliver, and set free. And God, you get the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise. And Father, we thank you for doing it now. We bless you for doing it now. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you agree with that prayer tonight, just shout amen in your atmosphere. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to be renewed in their mind tonight. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to be restored in their spirit tonight. Yes, yes, yes. God's going to restore you. Hallelujah. One thing I love about restoration is, amen, you can't be restored until you lost something. Come on. You, you can't be restored until you have lost something. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sister May? 
Listen, you, you can't receive restoration until you have physically, mentally, spiritually lost something. Who am I talking to tonight? Somebody has suffered a great loss. Hallelujah. Whether it was natural, spiritual, hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah. Even mental. You might have lost, you know, even some parts of your thoughts. Glory to God, because the enemy has been raging. Who am I talking to tonight? Glory to God. He has been raging in your life. And so your thoughts have been all over the place. My God, tonight. Yes, Lord, I hear you. And so God is high above. Hallelujah. He says he's going to restore your thoughts also. Hallelujah. You're going to be able to think again. You're going to have sound thoughts. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. You're going to be able to make decisions. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You're going to be able to make godly decisions. Who am I talking to on tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of you, God has made you a promise. Hallelujah. But the promise is getting ready to manifest. Glory to God. Not many days hence. Yes, Lord, I hear you. For those who have been in alignment. Hallelujah. Those, oh God, those who have been walking in obedience to God, you're getting ready to eat the good of the land. Hallelujah. The promise has already been um sent. Hallelujah. The promise has already been spoken over your life. And now now you're getting ready to walk in the manifestation of it. But God says, I need you to rest. Glory, glory, glory. Mm. He says, I need you to rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a word for the body of Christ. God is saying, I need you to rest. I need you to rest your mind. I need you to rest your body. I need you to rest even your heart. Hallelujah, because sometimes our heart can be racing. Sometimes our heart can be going through so many things. Come on. And if you, you just experience a heartbreak, you don't need another heartbreak. Mm, who am I talking to? You, you don't need another situation to happen again. You don't need another crisis. You don't need another, uh, another failed marriage. You, you don't need that. So God is saying, I need you to rest. Hallelujah. Rest and, re and reflect. Upon my goodness, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. He told me that. He said, daughter, tell my people I need them to rest. Because what I'm getting ready to release in the earth, hallelujah, is going to be full manifestation. Glory to God. And, and see, it's just like when God blesses us. When the Lord blesses you with something and you're really not ready. Think about this. It's like a partial blessing. You know, it's like you're confused about it. You know, you're not, you're not sound. In other words, your decisions are not sound. So the blessing comes, but what happens when you're not ready for it? Come on. The Bible says in Psalm one, let's read Psalm one. So you all can understand. Amen. Just a little bit better. Let's read Psalm one. Before we go to second Corinthians chapter um, five, let's go to Psalm one real quick. I want to give somebody this revelation. Okay. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Psalm 1, let's read Psalm 1 real quick. Because it's great revelation in that um, when God, when your season comes, when your season comes around, you're either going to be in position to receive or if your season comes and you're not ready, it's going to bypass you. Okay. I want you to hear this. Um, Psalm 1, it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. <laughs> Excuse me, nor standeth in the way of sinners. God bless you tonight. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight. Somebody shout delight. Somebody shout delight. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree that is what? Planted. Somebody shout planted. By the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Come on. And his leaves shall not wither. And whatsoever he does, it will prosper. Okay? I want to stop right there. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Right? Let's skip down to verse 2. But his delight. See, when we delight in the word of God, look at what happens. We shall be like a tree. So, so every time we delight in the word, every time we meditate upon the word, come on. I want to give you this revelation because when your season comes around, you have to have enough inside of you. You got to have enough word inside of you. Come on. You have to have enough inside of you to be able to receive the blessing in the fullness. Come on. It's nothing like your season coming and you're not ready. It's nothing like when the blessing is released. 
and you're partially delivered. You're partially healed. Come on. So God is saying what I'm getting ready to do for my people. I need you to be in a place of rest, right? His delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law does he meditate day and night. That's the one that's blessed, right? Verse three, and we shall be like that tree. Come on, catch this revelation. You shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. Why does the psalmist um, emphasize about em emphasizes on water? The psalmist, the psalmist em emphasizes on water. I'm getting tongue tied. Emphasizes on the rivers of water to let you know that where there's water, there's life. Come on. Where there's water, there's also peace. Who am I talking to? Come on. But we shall be planted by the rivers of water. Come on. And we're going to bring forth our fruit when? In our season. Come on. But what happens when your season comes around? I got to say it again. Because so many people miss their season. Come on. I see so many people. You know, that's why the Bible says you didn't run well. But who hindered you? Come on. You was running real good. You were doing real good. But what happened? Something happened. Come on. Who bewitched you? Come on. That's what the Bible says in the book of Galatians. Hallelujah. You, you was running real good. You were on fire for God. You, you were following his word. You were obeying his word. But what happened? What happened? Come on. Hallelujah. Some of you are caught up in some things you need to come out of. And it's stopping your progress from running. I'm talking to somebody tonight. Come on. You, you, you cannot continue in that. Hallelujah. You got to come out of that. Glory to God. So that God can fulfill his promise in your life. Sister Pamela says, I dreamed about water. I dreamed about being by water. Amen. Amen. So this is your word tonight. Amen. Glory to God. And every time you're by the water, Sister Pamela, that means that you are planted. God is revealing to you that you are planted. Hallelujah. That's a prophetic dream. And anytime you dream of water, amen, you're dreaming about life. Amen. Also, there's healing in water. Glory to God. Amen. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I'm not even a nurse. So I can't even tell you, you know, exactly all the dynamics of water. But I can tell you this. Mm -hmm. I can tell you this. Amen. That That's right. Kelly Drive. Yeah. Kelly Drive was, was a good outlet for a lot of people. That's a place in Philadelphia where you go by the water and you can just sit. Amen. And they have a cross from where you where the cars are parked in Kelly Drive where you can look and you see the row houses and all the row. They have row houses with all the boats and it's lit up. It's so lit up and it's so beautiful and it's so peaceful. Amen. So that is a peaceful place. Amen. Sister, um, Maisha, glory to God, back there in Philadelphia. Amen. And so even when you're by the water, God is saying that's a place of peace. Come on, it's a place of peace, right? Glory to God. And God is saying that's where he wants us to be, in a place of peace. Because guess what? There's no way for you to rest until you relax. See, there's one thing to say, I'm going to get some sleep. Right? When we get some sleep, it's just that sleep. But when you get rest, that means your body is relaxed completely. Come on. This is why it's good, ladies and men. I encourage you to go get massages. I, I encourage you to take care of your body. You know, I encourage you to work out. I encourage you to drink more water. Why? Because your body is going to get to a place of rest. Hallelujah. You're going to rejuvenate your body and see one thing. God bless you on um, Instagram live. God bless you. Woman of God. Apostle Cecilia. Is it? Amen. Apostle um, Celia. Celia, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Yes. So what happens when you get massages, all the toxins are being pushed out of your body. I want to help somebody tonight. I'm going to try to teach more than preach. Amen. Even men, men, it's good for you to go get massages. Go get those toxins pressed out of you. It's only $60, $70. Listen, I paid the most I paid was $125 for a massage. I've upgraded. I don't, I don't just do an hour anymore. I do 80 minutes. <laughs> Glory to God. Why am I sharing this? Because I take care of my temple. I try my best to take care of my temple. Come on. Glory to God. Amen. You know, the Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
right? So in order for the Holy Spirit to stay in us, we got to take care of it. Come on, this is why God says don't indulge in sin. In other words, don't indulge in alcohol and, you know, and all of that stuff. Whatever you partake in your mouth, amen, it goes down into your, into your body, into your spirit. Amen. We are to drink water. We are to replenish ourselves. Amen. I'm not here to point the finger at nobody. I don't know your sin. God does. Amen. So that's not my job to point that out. Amen. I'm, I'm just here to deliver the word. That's all. I'm just the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> Amen. Please don't shoot the messenger. Come on here. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Don't shoot me. All right. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Marcia. Amen. To God be the glory. Listen, this wisdom came from God. I can truly say the wisdom that I have has come from the Lord. He taught me. God taught me a lot of things. A lot of stuff I learned. I learned from my leaders. Amen. They poured into me and I received it and I walked in manifestation. Amen. So God is saying rest. All right. That's the first word rest. But in order for us to rest, I'm sorry. Relax is the first word. God wants us to get to a place of relaxation. How do we relax when our mind is at ease? Okay. Many of you need to, you need to do this sometime throughout the day. You need to relax. You need to relax. If you're not relaxing, then that means your, your, your mind is not at ease. That means that you got so much stuff on your plate, which means you need to now reevaluate the things that are on your plate. Come on. Let me give it to you simple in the Holy Ghost. You got to reevaluate what's on your plate. Come on. I have to do the same thing because sometimes I find myself being so busy. If, my, if I'm so busy, I don't have time to pray as long as I should. I don't have time to read my word. I don't. And this is for me. Now, this ain't got nothing to do with, with you know, me feeding God's sheep as the pastor. This, this is for my life. I want to help the prophets out. Y'all need to stop trying to prophesy to everybody and you need to go to God for a word from, for yourself. Because see, when you go to God for a word for yourself, prophet, what happens is when the prophet comes, they're going to bring confirmation of what God already told you. Amen. Come on. There was a prophetess that came into our service um, yesterday. Amen. At the end of the service, the Lord, you know, spoke through her and it was some things that she spoke over my life that God had already told me. What am I saying? I believe that I'm in proper alignment now to receive it. See, because prophecy is, is conditional. Prophecy is predicated upon your obedience to God. Come on. Somebody can prophesy over your life 20 times. If you don't line up and be obedient, it's not going to come to pass. Come on. Yeah, it's the truth anyhow. Amen. Prophecy is predicated upon your, upon your obedience to God. Many of you have prophecies that you're waiting for. And God is waiting on you to line up. He's waiting on you to be obedient. And a lot of times it's not even hard. It's just some things that you have to do. Some things you got to put in place. Amen. Thank you, woman of God. That's right. Relax. Amen. How many of you are going to start relaxing after today? Glory to God. Take an hour. Take an hour out of your time just to relax. Listen, ladies, y'all y'all know how we do. We come in the house. Take you listen. Get up, put some comfortable clothes on. Put some nice little slides on your feet. Listen, turn the TV off, turn the radio off, turn your cell phone off. Listen and just put your head back and just rest in God. Hallelujah. Just relax in the Lord. Men too. Amen to the brothers. Glory to God. Get to a place where everything is quiet. Just quiet your spirit. And just let God minister to you. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. All right. So relax is the first word, right? Then we have rest. Okay. You getting this, Sister Nidra? Amen. Listen, then we have rest. All right. And God says, when you get to a place to relax, God bless you, Sister Tammy. It's good to see you tonight. Um, relax. Then you're able to rest in God. And after you can rest in God, then you can receive from him. All right. Okay, so let's go to, amen, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Amen, amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Amen, amen, um, man of God, Maurice. Amen. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Let's turn there quickly. Um, and after that, we're going to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. I know that's kind of out of order, but that's the way I want to read it. All right? <laughs> so it's 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Amen. You know what? Let's read 18 also. We're going to read 18 also, okay? All right. So, um, amen. The Lord also spoke to me and I wrote it down. He said he wants to refresh your, he wants to refresh, he wants to renew and revive your spirit. Amen. God bless you, Tam. God bless you on tonight. Amen. God wants to refresh, renew, and revive your spirit. Mm-hmm. Many of you need it tonight. God showed, God showed it to me as I was in prayer. Many of you need it. You need it. Your mind is all over the place. Your mind is all over the place. I'm talking to you tonight. Mm-hmm. His word is for you tonight. All right. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. What does it say? It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us unto himself by Jesus Christ. And has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That goes back to what I said in the beginning. How can we bring reconciliation to the body of Christ or to God's people if we have not been reconciled? Amen. So God is saying if any man be in Christ, any woman be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. Amen. Can you truly say tonight, since you've been saved, you're a new creature? I just want you to think about that. I want you to think about that. Since you gave God your heart, amen, the day that you uh, repented and came to God, can you truly say that you are a new creature? Some of you, that's your testimony. I've been renewed. I've been redeemed. I've been restored. You know, God has healed my heart. Hallelujah. Many of you have testimonies of what God has done. Are you that new creature? I want you to just think about that tonight. Because if not, you may have backslidden. Amen. You you may have um, gotten to a place to where, you know, you believe God, but you don't see the manifestation anymore. You know, you may have been in a place where you were running for God and now you're not running anymore. You know, so everybody is on different levels tonight. Everybody is not on the same level. In other words, everybody is not in the same place tonight. But this word is going to find you right where you are. So if any man be in Christ, catch that revelation, in Christ, somebody shout, I need to be in God. Come on, we need to be in God, right? If any man be in Christ, come on, I want you to say that, in Christ, come on, get that in your spirit. If any man be in Christ, he or she is a new creature. So that means old things, the old mindset the old way of thinking. Listen, you don't beat people up no more. You wanted, you used to fight back in the day. You don't fight no more. <laughs> Come on, I'm trying to give an example. You know, listen, when you in Christ, you 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 just walk away. You like, you know what? Okay, you're right. Vengeance belongs to God, right? Come on, He said, "I will repay," saith the Lord, right? Amen. So that's just an example. You know, the things we used to do, we don't do anymore, right? That doesn't mean that we're perfect. Let me just clarify, that doesn't mean that we're perfect, but we are striving for perfection every day. Amen. Somebody shout, that's holiness. Amen. That's what holiness means. Amen. When, we, when you're striving to please God, not people, not people, catch this revelation. Holiness has nothing to do with you pleasing people. Come on. Holiness has nothing to do with us pleasing people. Come on, I want you to think about that for a minute. It's when we please God. Amen? That's true holiness because we're walking close to God. We're walking in his word. Amen? That's true holiness. And God will clean you up. Come on, God will deliver you. Amen? When you walk, when you walk with him in true holiness. Amen? I'm telling you, God will do a work in your life and you'll be like, oh my goodness. You'll be like, I, I never thought that it could be like this. <laughs> you know? You'll have such a peace in your mind when you really walk in true holiness. Listen, the peace of God will be on your life and then the favor of God will come and you'll find yourself just amazed in God, you know, and I'm talking about really amazed. I'm not talking about by, by the material blessings. I'm talking about by the spiritual blessings. Let me help somebody tonight. This is why your pastors need to be teaching you the word of God. 
all this prophecy, all this one, two, three shout in our churches. Mm -mm. God is not pleased with that because the people are leaving out of these churches broken. They are leaving hurt. Listen, people are still leaving. After the one, two, three shout, they go into the store, buying their nicotine, you know, looking for the dope man. I mean, all kinds of stuff. I'm being real. I'm being so real. And they'll tell you church was good, but there's no real deliverance. Come on, there's no real freedom. Come on, the, the church is the hospital. Oh, God. I, I want somebody to catch this revelation real quick. Your church is the hospital. If you don't see your church as a hospital, then you're seeing it wrong. Come on. Come on. I want, I want even the leaders in the body of Christ to start seeing their ministries as a hospital. Your church is a hospital. So when people come in, they coming in with all kinds of stuff. Oh, God. Hallelujah. They coming in with mental trauma. They coming in with physical trauma. They coming in, listen, spiritually jacked up. I'm being honest. You got to see it as that. Higher by shape. But what happens when you got the surgeon, of course, who is Jesus himself, and you got the pastor or the leader doing all the work? Come on here. That means a team needs to... Because I know who I am in God. I'm a spiritual midwife. I already know that. Hallelujah. Deliverance and healing. Amen. It's very strong in my ministry. I, I already know that. Glory to God. But those who are around me and in my circle, you need to see that. And if you can't see church as a hospital, and if you come in to receive and you come in to get all you can get it, you know, you got people coming with the wrong mindset. Hallelujah. After a while, your mindset should shift. In other words, if you've been in church for a long time, but you know your church operates in healing, then guess what? Everybody that God is sending there needs what? Healing. Come on. And after you have been healed, see, the Holy Ghost got to break it down like this. After you have been healed, now it's your job to pray healing for somebody else. Come on. Hallelujah. I prophesied to so many people before I walked in my prophetic calling. Come on. Hallelujah. What does that mean? By the permission of my leader, I was able to prophesy to those in the pew. I didn't need a title. I didn't need a microphone. Glory to God. Because the word that God gave me to speak was a true word from the Lord. So I had already knew who I was in God. I didn't need validation, but my leaders knew who I was. Come on. Does your pastor know who you are? Oh my God. Woo, Jesus. Hey, listen, does your pastor really know who you are? Shut up. I said, does your pastor know who you are? I'm looking, it's quiet. <laughs> does your leader really know who you are? Because if you're a part of a church and a ministry, they should know who you are. You know who you are, but do they know who you are? Oh, this is good. This is good. This is good. This is real good because your pastor should know who you are. And by the time you go to your leader, help me, Holy Ghost, tonight. By the time you go to your leader, it'll already be confirmation in their spirit. I already know the ministers that's in my congregation. I already know the prophets. I already know those that have a pastoral calling on their life. God has already revealed that to me. You could have joined last week. I still know. I'm supposed to know. I'm talking about true leadership. Now, I ain't talking about all this other stuff. Amen? So are you in the right place? That's my question to you tonight. Are you in the right place? And I'm not talking to our members and covenant partners. Amen? Y'all know y'all in the right place. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen? But does your leader know who you are? Come on. When's the last time you did a, uh, what's that, the, the assessment, a ministry assessment? Glory to God. When's the last time you prayed and fasted, you know, and sat down with your leader? See, they, people don't do that no more. You know, it's just, it's all of this. People come to the pastor now about, can I, can I say it? About stupid stuff. People come to the pastor about stuff that don't even matter. You want to tell me that your fish died?
And I and I'm I'm really I'm 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 being facetious with that. I'm really trying. To, I'm telling you all how how minute the things are that people say. And I'm like, okay, you don't know how to pray. You sitting under all this power and all this anointed, and you want to call me about. Or you want to meet with me after church about. Or you want to meet with me before church about. Are you serious? When we got people coming in that's suicidal. Young lady came into our church service yesterday. And I'm not going to put all her business out there. But she really needed God. And God did something amazing for that young lady. The Lord delivered her. God healed her. God set her free. Listen, y'all give me about 10 more minutes and I promise you we're going to be off. Listen, God did something amazing for that young lady. And when I tell you that's a real ministry, come on. But if I got people on the side of me talking foolish and, and not even focus on the things of God, how y'all by shape? This is why I tell people I can't get so close to you. I, I can't get close to everybody because there's souls in the balance. If I don't text you, for the next three months, if I don't reach out to you, you still know that I'm your pastor. Come on. If I don't say nothing to you, you should still know that everything is all right. Because I'm about to turn my phone off, <laughs> to be honest. I'm being so honest. How y'all about shape? I tell people, if you need God, come to the church. Especially if you're here in North Carolina, come to the church. Come to church. You'll get what you need from God. Amen. Get on the prayer line. <laughs> you know, sometimes you don't need counseling. You just need to hear the word. All right. Okay. Glory to God. All right. Second Corinthians um, chapter 5, 17. You know what? That was one I was supposed to read, but let's read. Amen. First Corinthians. That's right. No excuse. It's really no excuses. I mean, you know. It is what it is, you know, and we, we got to do better. We got to do better because if you've been saved, let me just say this. You've been saved for five years, 10 years. Some of y'all been saved over 10 years. You should be praying for other people by now. Listen, you, you don't, you don't need nobody constantly babysitting you. Somebody shout, Lord, help me to do better. Somebody shout, Lord, help me to do better. Help me to do better, God. Come on. Make it personal tonight. Amen. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. 2 Corinthians 4 and 6. Y'all doing all right? <laughs> Y'all still with me? <laughs> Somebody say, Pastor, it's getting hot. It's getting real hot in here. You know, I'm, I'm finding myself in the word. I'm finding myself in the word. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I think I got the wrong. Um, I think it's 1 Corinthians. Yes. I'm telling you, we got to do better. Come on. Come on here. Everybody called. I'm saying, what are you called to do? How, how is everybody called in the church? Okay. All right. I got the wrong scripture, but we're going to keep on going. Amen. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you shall find rest. Somebody shall rest for your soul. Amen, Sister May. Amen, Sister Mitzi. Let's read that again. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you. Right. He said, and learn of me. This is a problem with a lot of believers. They don't want to learn of God. But when you rest in him, you can learn of him. <laughs> Amen. Amen, Prophet Andrea. Keep me lifted. Keep me lifted so I can get this word out. Amen. Um, I want to give you all that scripture because I wrote the wrong one. Yes, I wrote the wrong one, but I want to give you all that word. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Jesus says, yes, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I had the wrong scripture. That's Matthew 11 and 29. All right. And why does, why does Jesus say this? He says, take my yoke. 
my yoke. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He says, for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest. Some of you need rest for your soul, but this is how you get rest for your soul. Amen. When you take on Jesus yoke, amen. His yoke is easy. All right. Is his yoke is not bondage. Amen. Glory to God. So we thank God, amen, that we can rest in him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And also what the Lord gave me, amen. Oh, Sister Sean says blessings. God bless you, Sister Sean. Amen. Look forward to seeing you. I know you're here in North Carolina. Amen. Tell her God bless you. Tell her I said God bless you. Amen. Um, yeah, so God wants to renew you. He wants to renew your mind. Let's turn to Isaiah 40 and 31. Y'all stay with me for 10 more minutes. Y'all okay tonight? <laughs> I know it's getting late, but some of y'all got a nap in between the day. I don't know how you did it, but some of y'all got a nap. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Um, Isaiah 40 and 31. Yes, yes, yes. All right. You know what? Let's read. Um, let's, let's go up to 30. Let's go up to 30. All right. So this is Isaiah 40, 30 and 31. What does it say? It says, even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. Okay. So even the young people get tired. That's what that means. Even our youth get tired. Okay. But the Bible says in 31, it says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. All right. When we wait on God, he renews our strength. Amen. So even in our time of rest, come on, even in our time of quiet in our spirit, what's happening? We're still waiting on God. Amen. You got that, Sharia? <coughs> I'm glad to see you on tonight, Sharia. Amen. Um, glory to God. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. You getting this, Sister Roberta? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 through 24. All right, let's turn there. Those of you that don't have your Bibles, write the scriptures down if you will. Amen. Instagram live. I'm going to cut Instagram off because it looks like we don't have anybody over there, which is fine. Amen. Um, Periscope is no more. Amen. So we've stopped Periscope. So I said, well, let's do Instagram live. So many people say, Pastor, if you get on Instagram live, I'll be right there. <laughs> They come on and off. Amen. That's all right. Um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. Let's turn there quickly. Glory to God. This is good. This right here is real good. Amen. This one right here is real good because it helps us to see ourselves. All right. Yeah, this helps us to see ourselves. So 22 says um, that you put off concerning the former conversation. You know what? Well, let's go up a little bit. Let's go up to, hmm. Okay. Hmm. Okay, let's go up to 20. Let's go up to 20. Hey, Amen. God bless you, Sister Katrina. God bless you tonight. 20 says, but you have not so learned Christ. If so... Be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Somebody underline that. The truth is in who? The truth is in Jesus. Right? Verse 22. That you should put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. My God. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Come on. Somebody shout. This is me. This is me. I need help. That's right. Verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24, and that you put on the new man, which is God, I'm sorry, which is after God, <laughs> is created in righteousness and true holiness. All right, verse 25, wherefore putting away lying, we talked about that earlier, Speak every man truth. I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, speak every man truth with his neighbor. We talked about that earlier. For we are all members of one another. Verse 26. We're going to keep on going. 
Be ye angry and sin not. Uh-oh. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Uh-oh. Verse 27. We're going to keep on going. Neither give place to the devil. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Somebody shout, Lord, help me. Neither give place to the devil. Y'all hear that? Don't give place to the enemy. My God, tonight, 20, 28. And let him that stole still no more. Uh-oh. But rather let him labor, my God, working with his hands, the thing which is good, uh-huh, that he may have to give to him that needeth. That's everything that we've been talking about. In other words, God is saying, come out from the world. Come out from the way how you used to be so that you can now be an asset and a tool in my body. That's what God is saying. He's saying, I have need of you, but I need you to put away the old conversation. The old way that you used to talk, the old way that you used to be, right? He says, put away with that. I need you to, I need you to be done with that. He says, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Come on. I want you to remember anything that's lustful is deceitful. All right. Lust is deceitful. Can y'all remember that? Lust is deceitful. Anytime you're lusting after someone or lusting after something, that means that you, you willfully is not yours. That's why God said thou shall not covet. In other words, you shall not want what somebody else has. I want to help somebody tonight. That's one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not covet. Listen, don't, don't, you, you're not supposed to want what somebody else has. This goes into the word earlier today. Come on, jealousy leading to envy, you know? And a person that becomes envious, I got to touch this again tonight. When a person becomes envious, that means they want to be like you. They want to talk like you. They want to look like you. But guess what? They cannot stand you. You know what I say? You know what I say? Sometimes I don't even like me. So why you want to be like me? Come on. You know, sometimes I got to lay on the altar. So sometimes I got to go before God and say, God, I don't like that about myself. Come on here. So why do you want to be like me? Why do you want to try to hire you by shape? And listen, I don't have a problem. Let me just lift my hands to God. I don't have a problem with those who I mentor or those who I pour into my spiritual daughters, my spiritual sons, because what rests upon my life should be on your life anyway. If I'm your spiritual mother, come on here. Hallelujah. But you have people that are jealous of you, envious of you. They talk about you behind your back. They sabotage you. Hallelujah. They really want to get rid of you, but they know that, that, that you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Listen, they know you're not going nowhere. Come on. And if God has called you and put you in position, you really ain't going nowhere. Come on here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise from this. Somebody shout, I ain't going nowhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, if anything, they got to move. I got to watch my words. I got to watch my words because if I say it, God going to do it. If anything, they got to move. Hallelujah. But God, when God has his vessel in position, daughter, minister Asia, you, you ain't going nowhere. I don't care what they do. I don't care what they say. I don't care what dust they put down. I don't care what type of chicken feet. I don't care what witch doctor they, y'all don't want to talk. Y'all don't want to talk tonight. Don't make me go there because <laughs> I will go there in the Holy Ghost. How y'all by shape? I don't know how people dib and dab in witchcraft. It don't make no sense to me. You got to keep going back to the witch. To try to root me? Wait, 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 wait. Because I'm God's child. Hallelujah. Because, because, I'm, because I'm God's child, you got to go back to the witch doctor to try to root me. And then when it don't work, then you got to go back again and pay more money. So how foolish is that? Why do people even deal with witches and warlocks? Come on. When you can just repent and go to God. Oh, y'all don't want to talk. Y'all know I get to making faces. I, I just don't understand it. Hi, y'all by shape. No, you need to just submit to God and repent. Come on. Because the evil, the evil that's out there, that witchcraft. Listen, think about it. Think about it. I want somebody to really think about this. Think about it. 
They have to keep going back to the witch doctor to keep you rooted. You need to repent. You need to come back to God. And you need to put your money in the church. So that God can bless you. Why keep giving the witch and the warlock your money? The root worker. The soothsayer. And some people say, Prophet, you shouldn't talk like that. Witchcraft is real. Not in my book. It, it won't work. Hallelujah. It won't work. And see, it only works if you believe it. Shatanda Baha. Hallelujah. It only works if you believe it. Okay. All right. God said no weapon. When he said no weapon that's formed against you will be able to prosper. God meant just that. Listen, I don't care what witchcraft prayers they try to pray. And the Lord showed me earlier today when I was in my car that some of you, listen, the witch got your name in a, on a piece of paper in, a, in like a, in this type of glass. I saw some type of glass with a lid on it. And then I saw somebody's name in there. Really? They got to do all of that. Tell them don't even waste their time. <laughs> Tell them you wasting. I'm sorry. I got to laugh at the devil. I, I just, sometimes I, oh, I got to laugh at the devil because I, I, you know, and then you bounce back. Listen, and you bounce back and you right back in the devil face. And they sitting there looking like, how? how? Wait a minute. I did this to you. I did that to you. I tried to destroy you. I tried to destroy your name. Are you still here? <laughs> Somebody shout no weapon. <laughs> Let me stop. Because y'all know I get to laugh and I laugh at the devil. And that's what you got to do. Laugh at the devil. Laugh at the enemy. It's funny to me. Because, you know, I, I just don't understand it. Because guess what? Those witchcraft prayers that you are praying, P-R-E-Y-I-N-G, you could be praying to God. Get yourself together. Somebody shout it will not work. The weapons may form. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Because I just I just don't get it. I just don't, you know, people try to listen. Because this is the thing. And even with that, thank you, thank you, Holy Spirit. Even with manipulation, people try to manipulate you. I'm getting in trouble tonight. Because some of y'all, I'm on your street right here. I told my son, don't listen to the girl that's going there on his behalf. I tell we coming out. Amen. Amen, Sister Michelle. I'm telling you, witchcraft is real. Manipulation is real. Listen, when I say it's real, meaning people doing that stuff. Listen, so you got people that want to manipulate you, right? They try to buy you, right? Come on. You got people that try to manipulate you with good words and, you know, making it sound good. That's manipulation all day long. And how many of you know a true prophet can see through that? Come on, it, it, it's, it's straight manipulation. Come on, and, and when, when you're being manipulated, you can also feel it. You know it's not real. Ooh, God, who am I helping tonight? Somebody just went through that. Yes, God, I hear you. Somebody just went through that, and somebody is in that. Somebody is in that. You're being controlled. You're being manipulated. Glory to God. And I went back and I watched the video just to read y'all comments. Amen. And I forgot to touch on Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel. Let me just help y'all tonight. Jezebel is not just a woman. The spirit of Jezebel is in some of these men. Jezebel ain't nothing but the spirit of control. And it wants to kill the prophet. Hiya, my shape. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Jezebel's assignment was to kill the prophet. Can I go a little deeper tonight? I got to go deeper, y'all. I got to go a little deeper with this. Let me go deeper because some of y'all about to mess up your theology. I'm about to mess up your theology right here. Listen, this is why in homosexuality, that spirit of Jezebel is running rampant in our men. It wants to control the other man. I, I, see, I, I see, I just messed some of y'all up right there. I messed some of y'all up right there. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. When you have two men, homosexuals, they're trying to control and manipulate each other to stay in that relationship. Lesbians, too. They do the same thing. 
It's all control and manipulation. And they use sex to do it. God ain't in none of that. Somebody got their answer. That's why you've been being manipulated. Come on. That's how you about shape. That's why you've been being bewitched. Come on. It's the truth anyhow. And I'm going to tell it. I'm going to tell the truth. Come on here. It ain't got nothing to do with, with your sexual preference. Oh, you know, this is what they say now to young people. I, I think, you know, boy talking about, I like boys. You know, I like boys. You got girls. I like girls. No, that's not your sexual preference. Somebody manipulate. Somebody manipulated you to believe that that's what you like. No. No, you, you don't like that. <laughs> That's not your higher by shape. It was a spirit. Let me help somebody. See, I, I'm getting in trouble. Because see, people don't want the truth. People don't want the truth. And the moment that the homosexual or the lesbian wakes up and realize they being manipulated. Listen, I ain't coming down on no sin. Sin is sin. Whatever your sin is, that's what it is. I, I don't have anything to do with that. I'm, I'm just a messenger. That's all. I'm just a messenger. That's it. Don't be mad at me. Somebody got the answer. Some, somebody really needed to hear that because I felt the release. Hi, Yabashe. Yes, I felt the release with that right there. Mm -hmm. I felt the release with that. It's just manipulation. You're being manipulated. They don't really love you or care about you because if you think about it, homosexuality, whether it's a man or with a woman, two men, two women, it ain't got, it's only flesh. Ain't no spirit in that. There, there is no spirit in that. In other words, the spirit of God, rather, there is no Holy Ghost inside of that. You cannot tell me. Come on here. Now you got same sex marriage. The devil is a liar. So now you're going to get married to the same sex. And now you're going to go and adopt a child and bring them into that foolishness. I'm getting in trouble. But you know what? Somebody got to say it. You're being manipulated. You're being used and they really don't care about you. They're using your body. Come on. They're using your body. If you think about it, homosexuality, that's all it is. You're being manipulated. It's the spirit of witchcraft. It's Jezebel all day long. All day long. And what happens? Now, now y'all know I'm going to go a little deeper. See? I, I, listen, I can, I can go real deep. I, listen, I can, I can go there. We, we can go there tonight. Let, let me go a little bit deeper. This is why, <clears throat> yes, God, I hear you. We're going to go a little deeper because somebody needs to know this. And I believe it's somebody that may be struggling and you're going to get your answer tonight. Listen, listen. This is why when it's two men and they don't get what they want and that manipulation stops, they start fighting. Now they want to kill each other. And now they want, now it's getting violent. It's getting so violent to the point to where now they want to take each other out. But you just loved each other, so you say. And the same thing with women. Now they want to, oh, you cheating on me? Oh, you got somebody else now? There's no commitment? Because why? It's the flesh. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. It's flesh. Come on, anything that's of the flesh... It's of the devil. In other words, it's going to turn over to the enemy anyway. Sister Jennifer says she has a question. Sister Jennifer, you can kindly inbox me. Amen. Kindly inbox me. Amen. Yeah, it's the truth anyhow. But that spirit lingers over. Lingers over. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It lingers over if you have not been delivered. And that's why you got to be careful because you could be in the church and you could be camouflaging it. Mm -hmm. You could be covering it up all day long. Glory to God. And it's going to keep being exposed where, where the prophets are. It's going to keep being exposed where the power of God is. Amen. Come on. It's going to keep being exposed. Let's turn to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. We got a couple more scriptures tonight. Romans 12 and 2. Um, let's turn it real quick. Amen. Thank you, Sister Jennifer. Yes, inbox me. Glory to God. Yes, it's nothing but it's nothing but a strong spirit of Jezebel. That's all. 
And, and you know what? This is the thing too. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Lord brought it back to me. So Jezebel's assignment was to kill the prophets. Listen, she wanted to kill all the prophets, right? We know that in scripture. That was her job. That's what she was sent to do, to kill off the prophet. Now, what happens when someone who is involved in homosexuality is a prophet? See how that spirit of Jezebel comes to kill it. Somebody got the answer right there. I'm telling you, God gave me that revelation years ago. He gave me that revelation years ago. And if the enemy can pervert their mind, see, because it's all about perversion. Like you said, Sister Sequita, I saw your comment. It's what you see. Come on. You got to see it in order for it to get into your spirit. Who am I helping? Who am I helping tonight? Anything that's perverted got to get here. It got to get here first. And sometimes it can get in your ear gate. This is why people listen to people on the phone and all that. What time is it? Oh, yeah, it's almost 12 o'clock. I can say it. Phone sex. <laughs> Hope we ain't got no minors watching tonight. I know some of y'all had y'all kids listen to listening. I'm sorry. But, yeah, you got that phone sex, you know. So it's getting in your spirit through your ear. Come on. Come on. So you understand these are your gates, your ear gate, your eye gate, your mouth. That's the gate. Come on, your genitals. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to be real. Because see, if your pastor was telling it to you like this, then you'll, you'll keep your legs closed. Did I just say that in the Holy Ghost? I'm getting in trouble tonight. Whew, where's my... I need something to put over my face. You keep your legs closed. You'll realize you're going to wait on God because you're contaminating your spirit. Come on. And men, you will guard your, 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 you know. That's for your wife. That ain't for every girl in the neighborhood. What God gave you, gentlemen, is for your wife. I'm getting in trouble tonight. Come on. It's for your wife. Yeah. It's quiet. I don't see no hearts. I don't see no amens. But we're going to keep on going. It's quiet. <laughs> Come on. God don't want us to be whores and whoremongers. See, I'm the pastor that's going to be real. I'm going to tell you how it is. That's right, soul ties. And now you got to get delivered from all them unclean spirits. Now you got to get Joe out of you and, and Billy out of you and, and, and Bobby out of you and, and Mike out of you. And you got to get, you know, all of this. Uh, you got to get all these people out of you now. And then you talking about I'm waiting on my husband. You talking about I, I'm waiting on the Lord. God going to bless me. But you keep on contaminating your spirit. So how can God send the one... I need all 50 people to hit that share button one more time. Listen, you might not even like me after tonight. Can you hit the share button? Because <laughs> some of y'all ready to come off the live and say, she getting on my last nerve. Good. Good. Because you need to go back and listen to this word. I I'm telling you. I listen, it's good. Somebody shout, this is good. This is what I need to hear. I need somebody to tell me the truth. See, these prophets not going to tell you the truth because they want your seed. They want your money. They, they, they're not going to tell you the truth. Because half of them dibbing and dabbling. I'm getting in trouble tonight. Half of them in homosexual relationships, I'm getting in trouble. And y'all see it. But you sit up there talking about, oh, the prophet is always accurate. You don't even know their lifestyle. We're going to leave that alone. Let's turn to Romans chapter 12. You shall know them. Y'all know I'm telling the truth tonight. I love truth. I, you know, I... <laughs> I love truth. You shall know them by the fruit that they bear. Do you examine the fruit anymore? Examine my fruit. Please examine my fruit. Please. I'm, I'm asking you to examine the fruit of this ministry. Please. 
And you should. You should. You shouldn't partake everywhere. You shouldn't eat at everybody's table. Come on. Amen. Amen, Sister Michelle. To God be the glory. See, that's what I'm talking about. See? See that? That's what I'm talking about. Amen. It's always somebody that's listening that needs to hear. Glory to God. I'm telling you. Because my former pastor, she told us, she said, listen, y'all better keep your legs closed. God got husbands for y'all, but you better keep your legs closed. <laughs> I said, yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Y'all know I, I'm going to stop. I'm trying to tell you, some of y'all rejoice over the wrong thing. No, you need to rejoice over something like that. Thank you, Jesus. Come on here, because your husband don't want nothing that's all tainted and all jacked up anyway. <laughs> Come on, men of God, holler back at me. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, help me, God. You done been around the block. You done been back around the block. You done been on the other block. You done been, you done, you done been on that. <laughs> Take a year off. <laughs> Take a year off when you slow down. Just slow down. You know, just slow down and get to know you. Because ladies, let me just help y'all. Let me just help y'all. Ladies, listen, sometimes you got to, okay, can I be, can I be real? Can I be real? Some of the ladies, and we found this out in our women's conference, some ladies didn't even know how to embrace themselves. You weak, Sister Jennifer, it's the truth. They done been around everybody block. You know, all the homies know them, and the homies' friends know them, the homies' cousins know them, and you talking about God going to bless you with a man of God? I'm not saying that he can't, and I'm not saying that he won't, but you need to take a break. <laughs> All right. Okay, y'all know I love y'all. Listen, it's the truth anyhow. Okay, you with me, Pastor Joyce? You got my back? All right. <laughs> Some people really ain't gonna like me after the night. So she just get on my everlasting nerves. I still love you, though. I really do. But the truth show what? Make us free. Amen. All 50 viewers that's still with me tonight, y'all give me five more minutes. Not even that, okay? Whew, glory to God. Listen, I'm trying to tell you, y'all, brothers, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? The single ones and the married men. Listen, y'all, you don't want your wife. That's the rule. Come on. And I'm talking about even in the world. Not even crossing over into the church. But even in the world, a man still didn't want a woman that was all promiscuous and just out there. He gonna put a ring on it and met. It makes no sense. And some of y'all just, I'm just, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm playing the field until that day happens. Okay, you keep on playing the field. Let me be quiet because whatever come out of my mouth going to happen, I, I'm, I'm going to leave it alone. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, and be not conformed to this world. Let me get back in the word. Sister Michelle, pray for me so I get back in the word, Okay. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, right? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. But let's go. That's right. Put a ring on it. And then it drops off. What well, You know what? Sister Carol, I'm going to leave that alone. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Y'all not going to get me in trouble tonight because I'm already in trouble. Um, Romans chapter 12. Let's go back to verse 1. Amen. Um, I beseech you, therefore, my brethren. This is the Apostle Paul. Let's go to verse one. He says, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies, right? A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And that's how we get to verse two. He says, and be not conformed. So conform means to, yeah. <laughs> Y'all cutting up tonight. Listen, and be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of who? God. All right? That perfect will of God. Somebody show, I want to please the Lord. Somebody show, I want to please the Lord. Come on, make that declaration tonight. Lord, I want to please you. Glory to God. And God will perfect those things that concern of you. God will clean you up. Amen? That's how you get delivered. 
Amen. When you cry out to God. Amen. When you ask God to clean you up. Glory to God. It doesn't matter how dirty, how filthy you are. Amen. It doesn't matter how filthy you have been. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't even matter what you have done. God can clean you up. Amen. I know we were going a little deep about the flesh, but it's the truth. And sometimes we need to hear it just like that so that we can come out of sin. Amen. So that we can be conscious of sin. Amen. Because even as a child of God, let me help somebody real quick. Y'all give me two more minutes. Even as a child of God, we have to be sin conscious. The church don't teach that anymore, but we teach it here in our ministry. Amen. We have to be sin conscious. What does that mean? Lord, help me not to sin. And if I do sin, God, please forgive me. Amen. Please forgive me, Lord. Amen. Here in this ministry, I teach our members and covenant partners. I teach often, even on our prayer line when we exit, amen, to repent before you go to sleep. Repent before you go to sleep. Why? Because you may have done something that day or during the day that you didn't repent for. Right? We may have looked at somebody wrong. We might have said something wrong, you know. And, and sometimes, you know, our spirit just ain't right. That leads us to Psalm 51 and 10. Amen. Sometimes our spirit is just not right, you know, and we got to ask God for forgiveness every day. Amen. And every night, make sure before you go, to, that's why the Bible says, don't let the sun, we just read it. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Amen. If you angry, you got to repent for that. You got to repent because guess what? People die in their sleep all the time. Listen, they die in their sleep all the time. Come on. Amen. You got people that pass away in their sleep and they may not have had it. <laughs> Excuse me. They may not have had time. I need some water. Mm. They may not have had time to repent, you know. Amen. They may not have had time to repent, you know. So we have to repent daily. Amen. It's very easy. It's very easy. I got, I got to say that it's very easy because, you know, the enemy will make it seem like it's hard to live this life. Amen. This life is the best life you can live to save life, but it's not hard to please God. It's really not. We just have to come out of our sin nature. The Bible says that we were born in sin. And we were shaping in iniquity. Amen. And in our mother's womb, amen, we had sin. So because of that, we were born in sin and shaping in iniquity. So that's past tense, right? Amen, Sister Sharia. Amen. You know, so what, what that means is if we're born in sin, there's sin already inside of us. This is why, you know, one-year-old don't have no problem with saying no. You know, a toddler will tell you no all day long. No, 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 no. You understand? Because it's sin even in our children, our cute little babies. Cute little babies. You know, some of y'all got some cute kids. But it's sin in your baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Amen. We all were born in sin. I want you to get this revelation. So our kids are cute. Some of you got grandkids. Your grandkids are just as precious and cute as they can be. But it's sin in them. Right? So we need to be healed, delivered, and set free. We need, come on. Hallelujah. We need God to come. Amen. And come into our heart and be Lord of our life. Amen. And it's not too late for your children. You can always lead your children to Christ. Amen. Always lead your children to Christ. Amen. And keep them in the presence of God. All right. Psalm 51 and 10. All right. This is a Psalm of David. Let's go up to seven. He says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. He says, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Verse eight, he says, make me to hear joy. Oh, this is good tonight. And gladness that the bones which thou has broken may rejoice. Verse nine, he says, hide thy face from my sin and blot out all my iniquity. Verse 10, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit excuse me, within me. Amen. So this is what David says. He says, God, I need you to create in me. Amen. Create in me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. He goes on to say, and cast me not away from thy presence. 
Look at the repentance here from David. He is so repentful. He's saying, God, I don't want you to cast me away from your presence, God. He says, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. My God, tonight, we don't pray like that anymore. That goes back to the beginning. You know, when we do things over and over and over again, there's no remorse. You know, there's, there's no godly sorrow. Come on, we, we just keep doing the same thing over and over again. Talking about, God, forgive me. Uh-uh. David goes on to say, he says, cast me not away from thy presence. Oh, my God. Why do we feel like we can even come into the presence of a holy God any kind of way? I'm getting in trouble again tonight. I'm getting in trouble. The reason why I keep saying I'm getting in trouble because this goes against what some people believe. What I'm speaking through the spirit of God is going against their belief. But this is the word of God and this is the truth. He says, cast me not away from thy presence. In other words, God, I want to stay in your presence. Lord, please don't, 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 don't let me get to the place of where I'm, I'm not even in your presence anymore. Oh God, he says, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. We got to guard the Holy Spirit like a baby. The Holy Spirit is like a newborn baby. Right. Come on, mothers. Talk back to me. You know how when you're pregnant, you know, and you, you know, you don't want nobody just touching you. You like, don't, don't touch my baby. Don't no, no, Don't touch my stomach. Your spirit ain't right. <laughs> Come on here. Right. That's what we do. You know, when you're pregnant. Right. That's how we got higher by shape. That's how we got to guard the Holy Ghost. Come on. God, don't take your spirit away from me. God, I need your Holy Spirit. Lord, I'm sorry. God, please forgive me. And then after we repent, we have to ask God to help us. Come on. After we repent, we got to say, God, help me. Help me to do the right thing. Help me to live right. Help me to just, just do the right thing. God, help me. So, so David goes on to say in Psalm 70, amen. Thank you, Prophetess Andrea, for your seed tonight. God bless you, woman of God. Amen. Psalm 70. Yes. Hallelujah. God is speaking. Psalm 70 verse one. He says, make haste, O God, to deliver me. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Hallelujah. He says, make haste, O God, to deliver me. Come on. He says, make haste, O God, to set me free. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make haste, O God. Y'all with me in Psalm 70 and one? Psalm 70 and one, what does it say? He says, make haste. Make haste means to come quickly. Come quickly, come quickly, God. Come quickly, come quickly to deliver me. Come quickly to help me. Come on, somebody needs to start praying that this week. That needs to be your prayer this week, Psalm 70. Psalm 70 needs to be your prayer this week. Mm -hmm. God, make haste to deliver me. Come quickly to set me free, God. I don't want to stay in what I'm in. Whose prayer is that tonight? That's somebody's prayer tonight. That's somebody's prayer tonight. My God, that's somebody's prayer tonight. Yes, Lord. That's somebody's prayer tonight. Hiya, my shape. That's somebody's prayer tonight. Then he says in verse two, he says, let them be ashamed and confound that seek after my soul. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my hurt. He goes on to say, and let them be turned back for a reward of their shame that they laugh and say, aha, aha. Right? So David got to the place to where he said, God, I need you to come quickly. That's somebody's prayer tonight. Sister Lenore says, mine. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's your prayer tonight. God, I need you. God, I need you. Hallelujah. Lord, I need you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And a lot of times it's not even about material things. Yes, Lord, I hear you. It, it's spiritual. It's spiritual, Sister Lenore. It's spiritual because your needs are met. But you, you, need, you need God spiritually. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, a lot of times it's not even about the money we have. Come on, because a lot of times we have money, but we need God. Mm, hallelujah. I believe it was a couple weeks ago the Lord gave me that. 
Amen. Um, we don't need more money. We need more God. We need more of his spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. So those of you that feel led tonight, amen, to sow into this word, to sow into our ministry, to sow into this anointing. Those of you that feel led tonight, I want you to name your seed rest. Amen. I want you to name your seed rest. Let me give you Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31 and 25. It says, and I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. Mm -hmm. I will refresh the weary. Yeah, somebody's going to get strength tonight. I feel strength. Yes, God. He says, I will refresh the weary mm -hmm, and satisfy the faint. Come on. He's going to satisfy you before you give up. My God, my God. Mm. Hallelujah. Many of you tonight, God's going to give you rest. He's going to help you to relax. And then he's going to restore you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Some of you, your spirit was crying out. It wasn't more so what you said out of your mouth. In other words, many of you, your spirit has just been tired. Yeah. Yeah. Many of you, your spirit man has just been tired. And you say, God, I, I don't know if I'm a, if I'm gonna make it, you know. I, I don't know, Amen. If I'm if I'm going to make it, Amen. Here's the information for those who want to sow tonight, Amen. Name your seat, rest, Amen. Name your seat, rest tonight. Name your seat, rest. Glory to God. God's going to give you rest, and I want to give you all this one last key point before we go tonight. Um, If you think about a mother, Sister Kashina says, very tired. This is your word tonight. If you think about a mother who's getting ready to give birth, mm -hmm, they have to rest. In order to push that baby out, in order to push out that greatness that's inside of you, now this is spiritually, you got to rest. You, you're going to have to rest. You're going to have to rest your mind. You're going to have to rest your spirit. You're going to have to rest. Amen. And you're going to have to rest in God for clear instruction. Mm -hmm. That's a word for the body of Christ. This word is this is word. This word is for the church as a whole. We got to get to a place of rest so that we can hear Him clearly. Mm hmm. It's, it's too much chatter in the air. I hear God saying it's too many voices that are speaking. And they're saying is thus saith the Lord, but it's too much clutter. I'm talking to about five of you tonight. It's like one prophet gave you one word. Another prophet gave you another word. This prophet over here gave you another word. And you now have the spirit of confusion. And you're like, wait a minute. So what God is saying in that, <laughs> you have to relax and you have to rest mm -hmm, so that you can receive from the Lord. This is your season of refreshing. And if you know anything about a refreshing, what happens with the refreshing is you get to a place of being still. Have you ever been on the beach? In order for you to relax on the beach, you have to be still. Come on. Have you ever gone by the water? In order to relax, you had to be still. To enjoy the current, to enjoy the waves, to enjoy the scenery, you have to be still. Amen. The Bible says, be still and know. That he is God. Amen. Be still and know that he is God. Sister Lenore, I want to prophesy to you tonight. The Lord just dropped the word in my spirit for you. Sister Lenore, the Lord says for me to tell you that a promise is still a promise. The Lord says what he has spoken to you last year is still going to manifest. God says to hold on to his unchanging hand. 
because God has proven himself to be faithful to you, Sister Lenore. And you know God to be a restorer. You know God to be a healer. Sister Lenore, you have seen the hand of God in your life. And God says for me to tell you tonight that he's going to make the promise good, Sister Lenore. He just wants you to align yourself back with him. Hallelujah. Get back into alignment with the Father. And that is the word of the Lord concerning you, Lenore. You be greatly encouraged tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, Sister Sharia. Sister Sharia, we're going to pray for your mother. And you have the power of God in you, Sharia, to pray for your mom also. Amen. That she would get some rest and that her mind would be at ease. All right. So for the next three days, Sister Sharia, I want you to call your mom's name out. Amen. God bless you, Sister Lenore. And Sister Lenore, you got to drink some more water. Yes, God. Sister Lenore, you got to replenish your body. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Mm-hmm. Start drinking more water. Amen, Sister Lenore. Glory to God. Yeah. God wants you to replenish your body. Start taking care of yourself again. Yeah. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Mm. Amen. Amen, Sister Lenore. To God be the glory. Amen. Um, Sister Sharia, three days. Call your mom's name out, okay? Something's going to happen with her. Glory to God. Something supernatural. I hear God saying something supernatural. Amen. It's going to take place. Amen. Sister Tammy just got out of the hospital. Wow, Sister Tammy. Inbox me your prayer request, okay? I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Hmm. Glory to God. Amen. The information is there, people of God. Those that want to sow tonight, Instagram Live is off. We're going to take it all the way off so that I could just focus on, amen, um, so that I could go ahead and focus on, amen, um, Facebook, <laughs> amen. Um, I want to say to you all, tonight, um, you know, sometimes it's not always what you think. One, one thing about God, he gives us exactly what we need. And this is why the prophet has to really have an ear um, to hear what God is saying to the church. You know, it's not always about um, prosperity because pros prosperity is going to come when you obey God. You know, Matthew 6 and 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you, right? So we have to seek first what? The kingdom of God. Then we have to seek first his righteousness. And then everything that we desire, because I can see many of you, I see in the spirit, you have great desires, but you got to put God first. Amen. You got to get back to putting God first. Amen. If you don't have a pastor, we would love for you to join this ministry. I would love to be your pastor and your covering. Amen. Glory to God. We would love to welcome you into the family of Prophetic Impact Prayer and Word Ministry. Glory to God. Yes, we are located here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Amen. But our ministry is international. Glory to God. We have members all over the globe. Glory to God. And I thank God for all of our members. And it's an honor and a privilege to cover you and your families. Amen. So we thank God on tonight. Listen, get your seed in the ground and name your seed rest. Hallelujah. Those of you that can, I do want to say this. Those of you that can tonight, please sow into our building fund. Amen. We do need help with our building fund, our expenses at our, at our building, our location. Amen. So those of you that feel led, you can go to our website, which is www.propheticimpact1000.com. And you can click on um, products and you will see... Um, building fund. <laughs> Amen. You'll see the building fund there. My mind just went somewhere. I just saw something in the spirit. Um, glory to God. Hallelujah. Sister Lisa, God just flashed it before me as I was giving the website. Mm. Hallelujah. I saw you running, um, Sister Lisa. I saw you running the race. Mm. Yes, God, I hear you. I saw you running. It just, it just flashed right before me. Um, Sister Lisa, yes, Lisa Franklin Anderson, I saw you running. You were running, 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 running the race. You were like running a track. And it was like three lanes, 
and I see you running in the spirit. You're running. And God says you're getting ready to come to the, the end. Hallelujah. You're getting ready to come to the end. I can see the flag waving. Yes, God. I can see the flag waving, Sister Lisa. You're getting ready to come to the end. Hmm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. For you have been running this race, saith the Lord. Yes, God, I hear you. He says he's very well pleased with you, even in your running. Oh, my God. Mm. Hallelujah. You have kept a steady pace. Ooh, yes, God, I hear you. You have kept a steady pace, Sister Lisa, and you're getting ready to receive the reward. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I can see you rejoicing at the end. You're at the end of the race, and I see you rejoicing. And I can see them bringing in this big trophy, and it's, it's huge. And God says, for all the suffering that you've been through, glory to God. And this is not just a natural trophy. Mm. Yes, God, I hear you. This is, a, this is spiritual. This is spiritual. And you know how when you win a trophy, you take that trophy and you put it up on the shelf, you know, as a, as a memory. <laughs> oh, my God. God bless you, Sister Lisa. She's all the way in California, you all. One of our faithful members. We love Sister Lisa. Glory to God. But I hear God saying your race is coming to an end. Mm. Glory to God. Hiya Bashe. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. You are coming to the end and you're going to receive a huge trophy. And this is going to be a remembrance of what you have been through, what you have gone through, and what God has brought you through. Oh, my God. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's like I can hear you saying, God, when is this going to be over? God, when am I going to? Mm. I don't know if you said that today. It's like you've been saying, God, when is this going to be over? I need a complete release from this. And mentally, mentally, it was more so here. It's more so here. Mm -hmm. It's more so here. Yes, yes, it's more so here. And God's going to release you from that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Because there's more that you want to do. It's more you want to do, Sister Lisa. And there's more that you want to focus on. Yes, God, I hear you. And so you're going to be able to focus more. You're going to be able to focus. Your thoughts are going to be clear. you right at the end. I see you right at the end. <laughs> Glory to God. And I can see them bringing in this huge trophy. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. That is the word of the Lord for you, Sister Lisa. Glory to God. Remain faithful unto God. You haven't seen anything yet. Glory to God. God's going to open up another door before this year is over. Before 2021 is over, Sister Lisa, God's going to open up another door financially for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's connected to something else. This financial door, Sister Lisa, is connected to something that you already, you're already receiving finances, but another door is going to open up. And God says, because of your faithfulness, mm -hmm. glory to God. That is the word of the Lord concerning you. Amen. Listen, I'm going to go you all. I don't want to hold you all much longer. Amen. I just speak the blessings of the Lord upon each and every one of you. Those on our prayer line tonight, stay right there. Amen. We're on our live call right now. Amen. For those who want to join us, we're still on. Amen. Y'all see that number up there? That's our number. Amen. We are on the call. And I believe we have 12 callers on the line tonight. Amen. So jump on the call with us. Amen. We're going to finish the... Um, we're going to finish the prayer line. We're going to give the ministry's announcements, and then we're going to open up the line. All right, so we got to exit. Listen, God bless you all. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> God bless you all tonight. Amen. I got to rest my voice. <laughs> Glory to God. I thank God for all the leaders in the body of Christ, all the pastors that are watching tonight. I love you with the love of Jesus. Pray much for us. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Sharia. I will get some rest. Amen. I'm going to get some rest. <laughs> Glory to God. Not sleep. I'm going to rest tonight. Amen. I'm going to rest in the arms of Jesus. Glory to God. God bless you all. Have an awesome night on tonight. And remember, relax, rest, and receive from the Lord. God bless you. And shalom.